What's up, y'all? Welcome back. In this video, we're continuing our conversation about solutions to general linear systems problems. We're going to do so by looking at an applied example. The circuit schematic that you see on screen here is one example from a larger project that I've created that I call the Linear Algebraic Nodal Analysis Algorithm. This circuit is going to yield a general linear systems problem that we can filter through the template for complete solutions that we've studied in this lesson. Before we go on and discuss the specifics of this example, I want to show you how to access more information about this problem on my website. To do so, visit www.appliedlinearalgebra.com. That's my website. Go to blog and then scroll down on the right hand side where you see teaching support, linear algebra lab exercises. If you go down to electrify the linear systems problems for our student and click learn more, you'll see a blog post and ton of resources to support anyone who wants to learn about this. The point of this example is to empower students and teachers alike to find real world examples of linear systems that actually arise in context that matters to students academic and career life. This specific circuit is the one seen in the LANA example one. LANA means linear algebraic nodal analysis. Nodal analysis is a classic algorithm used in circuit analysis for electrical engineers. It's also the same circuit that shows up in a paper that I wrote on the subject called Electrify the Linear Systems Problems. Resources for both of those are found on that support website that we just saw. In terms of this example, we see that there are seven resistors in this circuit one, two, three voltage sources, and one, two, three current sources. We're going to claim that the voltage source information actually creates a general linear systems problem. These little dots right here, we call nodes. For more on that, take a look at the website that we just pointed to. The claim is that in order to find the voltage drop across an element, we look at the node potential difference. Another way to say that is if I wanted to define the voltage drop across voltage source one, that's going to be node potential U2 minus node potential U1. And the reason that we have positive U2 minus U1 is that's the direction of that voltage source. Another way to say that as a scalar equation is V sub V1 is U2 minus U1. The voltage drop across voltage source 2, we call that V sub V2. That's going to be U2, node potential voltage U2, minus U6. Similarly, the voltage drop across voltage source 3 is going to be U5, the voltage potential variable at node five minus U7, the voltage variable for the potential at node seven. One of the themes of linear algebra is to compress lots of information using a small number of symbols. Instead of focusing on these disparate voltage drop values across each element, we can create a linear systems problem that sums up all that information using one equations. We structure the right hand side known vector V and the left hand side differences using a matrix vector product. The reason that these right hand side vector entries are known is because in the definition of the search schematic, we see that each voltage source provides a five volt drop across the two leads. If instead of using unknown variables, U1, U2, U6, U5, U7, if we replace each of those U sub I values with X variables, then this voltage drop calculation actually works out to be this matrix vector multiplication, each of those has a value of five, which means the voltage drop information encoded in the voltage sources in this circuit yields this general linear systems problem. But this is in the exact form that we would want in order to apply the techniques that we've learned about solving general linear systems problems. With that in mind, we're going to look through a quick reference guide for solving general linear systems problems. This set of techniques we're going to use, this algorithm, starts with an input, which is a given matrix A and a given right-hand side vector B. 
That's exactly what we've done from this applied context. What we want to do for this algorithm is generate the complete solution x that solves ax equal b. In order to generate this, we're going to use a three-step process, aka an algorithm. The first step is going to be to reduce the original ax equal b into special form by multiplying by a sequence of elementary matrices on the left-hand side. That special form is going to be RREF. For those of you following along at home, I would encourage you to go on to the Octave online computer and use the techniques that we've seen to actually do that transformation. For me, I did that before this video started. <laughs> Done. I've now translated my original system, AX equal B, that arose from a modeling context into a special system that arose from doing mathematical work. This new system is in RREF form and we immediately see columns one, two, and five are pivot columns. That implies variables X1, X2, and X5 are pivot variables. The other variables, the one corresponding to the non-pivot columns, we are going to be free to choose. So our free variables in this case are X3, X4, X6, and X7. We see that the rank of this matrix is three. There are three pivot columns. The number of free variables is four. The number of non-pivot columns is four. Three plus four is seven. There are indeed seven columns. Moreover, when we wanna solve for a complete solution, we know every complete solution is gonna be a particular solution plus a trivial solution. That trivial solution is gonna be written as a linear combination of the special trivial solutions to that linear systems problem. Now that we've specifically identified the pivot and free variables, notice that the right-hand side vector y can be written as a linear combination of the pivot variables. And in fact, that linear combination is unique. It's as if I'm solving a non-singular linear systems problems. Look, this is an identity matrix. This is a right-hand side vector that has a unique solution. That solution is zero times the first pivot variable, five times the second pivot variable, and five times the third pivot variable. I use zero information from all of the free variables, and now I have my particular solution. But the complete solution is gonna be a particular solution plus linear combinations of the special trivial solutions. We know that F is four, there are four free variables, there are four special trivial solutions, we'll find each of those separately. We notice for the first free variable, that non-pivot column has all zeros. In order to send that matrix to zero, all I need to do is take one copy of that particular column, that non-pivot column. Thus, the first trivial solution to my homogeneous linear system is literally gonna be the vector 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, all the way down. We see the same dynamic at play for the second free variable. Column four is all zeros. If I wanna send the matrix A or the matrix U to zero, I just need one copy of column four. The second special trivial solution looks like this with a single non-zero entry equal to one in the fourth entry. For the third free variable corresponding to column six, the sixth column of our matrix, the third non-pivot column, we see that negative one, negative one, zero is negative one times one, zero, zero, which is the first pivot column, plus negative one times zero, one, one. When we look at this linear combination from the standpoints of the columns of the matrix U, we see that we can actually bring both of the negatives over to the other side and we get one times column one, plus one times column two, those are the two pivot columns, plus one times column six, the third non-pivot column. This yields our third special linearly independent trivial solution. I take one of the first pivot, one of the second pivot, none of those non-pivots, one of the third non-pivot, and then zero in the end, and now I get my third special trivial solution. To find my last special trivial solution corresponding to my last free variable, I notice that the seventh column is gonna be negative one times the fifth column. In other words, I can write the seventh column in terms of the previous pivot variables. Translating this relationship into a linear combination so that the right-hand side is zero, I see one of the fifth column plus one of the seventh column gets sent to zero. This immediately tells me that my fourth linearly independent trivial solution is gonna be a one in the fifth and a one in the seventh 
but that now that we found both the particular and the special trivial solutions, we can actually write our complete solution as a particular solution plus linear combinations of all the special trivial solutions. You saw that old Anderson gets a little bit cranky. Instead of introducing a vector C, let's write that vector in terms of the free variables in our system. That's exactly what we've done here. When we look at a complete solution, it's gonna be a particular solution, which is analogous to solving a non-singular linear system problem, plus a linear combination of the special trivial solutions where we can choose the free variables freely. We have free choice of all those variables, and I'm expressing the complete solution in terms of the original variables so that I can immediately see, oh yeah, those are free. I have a lot more to say about this general linear systems problems, the implication of the structure of the complete solution, how that relates back to this circuit, how that relates to larger structures in electrical engineering, but what I wanna say is we filtered all of this information through our algorithm. Let's recapitulate all the steps of our algorithm. We start with a general linear systems problem. First thing we do is we translate the matrix A into special form, RREF. Whatever translation we did on the left-hand side, we also do it to the right-hand side. We will see that one of the things that we wanna do is make sure that the vector Y can be written as a linear combination of the columns of U. If this does not happen, we call that a least squares problem, which we'll get into in a future video. There's no exact solution. But assuming that the vector Y actually is a linear combination, in other words, there's no new pivot information in Y. In other words, I can write Y as a linear combination of the columns of U. If that happens, then I can write every possible solution, the complete solution to my system, as a particular solution plus any trivial solution. Any trivial solution is written as a linear combination of the special linearly independent trivial solutions. We can find both of those by looking at the structure of the matrix U, which is what we just did. And when we finish this algorithm, we actually produce all solutions to our original linear systems problem. That wraps up our introduction to how to solve general linear systems problems. We'll have you do some practice problems on your own to make sure you got it. Before we actually conclude this lesson, I wanna go on to our last video, which is a discussion about rank. That concept shows up all over the place in introductory and more advanced linear algebra concepts. And I really wanna make sure that we got a full synopsis of that. I'll see you in that quick video.